What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a deep dive into the world of Princess Quest. Of course, I mean the whole series of Princess Quest, now there's three parts. Man, part three really left us on a cliffhanger. Let's talk about Princess Quest 1, Princess Quest 2, and Princess Quest 3, which are all about the dark history of the Princess's Quest. That sounds obvious, but believe me when I say there's a lot more meaning here than you may think. Today's video is going to work a little differently because it is entirely scripted, so let me know if you like this video format, and I may make more videos like this one in the future. Throughout Security Breach you may find the clues in the duffel bags that inform you there is something going on with Princess Quest Arcade Machines, a name that first appeared in the mobile port for Five Nights at Freddy's VR Help Wanted. Funnily enough, the mobile port for the VR game is actually a canon element to the series. One message states that There's a Princess Quest 1 machine somewhere in the building, an actual stand-up arcade. I guess the devs pulled it from that old mobile game, but why port to an arcade? And then the messages continue, showing that someone is trying to solve this arcade conspiracy to save the princess. Princess Quest 2, it won't boot properly. No idea why, shuts down when I try to play it, like it's a personal attack. Doesn't matter anyway, I still haven't found Princess Quest 1. And there's no record of a Princess 3 arcade, yet the cabinet is tucked away up in up Phaser Blast. It won't work, sometimes I hear it in attract mode, but I've never seen a single image displayed. It's too creepy, leave it where it is. <laughs> At least, until I play parts 1 and 2. I did it! I did what you wanted! I beat parts 1 and 2! Why won't you turn on? What else is there? Tell me! They are working together. The arcades! They're hiding something! The glitches! Glitch them all at the same time! Then the princess will recognize me! She's testing me! I'm not yet worthy. The others are protecting it! Let me stay! I'm so close! Just, just one more night, please! I can save the princess! This person then left the Pizzaplex, whether or not they were fired or killed, and now it's Gregory's chance to save the princess. Play through the simple arcade games, and you get to the Princess Quest ending, perhaps the best ending, where you save Vanessa from Glitchtrap, and the two and a half of you are at rest, eating ice cream and looking into the sunset. But how did this work? How did playing three arcade games save Vanny and give the best ending in the game? Well firstly, there's clearly something wrong with the arcades. I don't think that the contents of the game are actually part of the original game. I believe a lot of the dark rabbit creatures are glitchtrap manifestations, much like the big rabbit amalgamation at the end of Princess Quest 1 which we should probably talk about. This strange creature speaks in a weird coded language. When decoded, we can find out that it actually says I always come back, which is Afton's classic line. However, in the game files there's another message saying it's me, a message associated with Golden Freddy. People may have other beliefs, but mine is that Cassidy, who is the fifth victim of the missing children's incident, is at least one of the souls that possesses Golden Freddy. And so, a huge connection here can be made too, when you consider that the file name for the princess is actually titled Cassidy. That's a lot to take in, so here's what I'm saying in simple terms. We all probably thought that the princess in Princess Quest when it first came out was none other than Vanessa, mainly because we play as her in FNAF VR and the 16 torches could represent the 16 tapes she listened to. However, through the game files, it's pretty clear that the princess is actually Cassidy. And now that I've briefly explained what's going on here, 
I want to go into more depth with my personal views on the dark story of the princess and how the ending of Princess Quest correlates with the ending of Security Breach. Trapped within the castle walls, the spirit of the Golden Princess awakens, seeking revenge on the man who ended her life. She holds a lantern out in front of her, an embodiment of her soul, her motive to spread light through the castle, helping the other trapped spirits to rest, and destroying the purple virus before it becomes too powerful. Subtly, it's the story of Cassidy after her death within the walls of the pizzeria. Herself and five other children were killed, their gravestones grouped together by a tree. But Cassidy is vengeful. She's prepared to torment Afton after what he has done to the poor children. She uses all of her might to face Afton, but it's not enough. He always comes back. That is until chapter 2, when the princess is brought an opportunity. She awakes to the sound of a talking old man with flowing water. You are alive. That is good. Take the sword of light and go. She takes the advice of the old man and uses her new powers to do more damage to Afton. The old man, of course, represents old man consequences, sitting at his lake, giving Cassidy her new quest. On her way, she finds a strange torch which splits her spirit into two. I don't have a full explanation for the lore implications of this, but it could somehow represent Shadow Freddy, knowing that it is quite literally a shadow of Golden Freddy. When she is done, she is brought back to her original room, where Old Man Consequences says, Congratulations, your quest is done. Time to sleep. Similar to how in Ultimate Custom Night, he tells Cassidy to Leave the demons to his demons. Rest your own soul. There is nothing else. Cassidy, as we already know, doesn't listen. She has put souls to rest. She has tormented Afton, but she won't rest her own soul and she won't stop tormenting him. And because she doesn't stop, she is carried with Afton into the digital world. Afton is put into the VR game, and Cassidy still holds on. That brings us to chapter 3. Cassidy wakes up again, this time in the FNAF 1 office from FNAF VR. She haunts Curse of Dreadbear, where we see Golden Freddy Easter eggs. She retrieves the Vanny mask and the Glitch Strap plush, the two items that kickstart Vanny's personality, and it brings her to the room behind the curtain. None other than the shut door Vanessa's personality is locked behind. Cassidy opens it, hearing the screams of Vanny being killed off and saving Vanessa from Afton's grasp. Cassidy saved Vanessa. Princess Quest, which by the way is a working title, is actually Cassidy's quest. Cassidy's full story of becoming nothing but a spirit. One that seeks revenge and takes action against Afton. Princess Quest was originally a minigame on the mobile port both in and out of universe. It was then, as previously stated, ported to the arcade machines, meaning Cassidy possesses the machines. By saving the princess, you are neutralizing Afton's digital form and freeing those who have been taken hostage by him. And this is why I believe this ending is the true ending. You've defeated Afton in one form. You've disconnected him from the digital world after him mistakenly being imported into VR. However, as we know, Afton always comes back. And we know at this point that Afton was not only thriving as a virus, but he's also draining power from the Pizzaplex to do more harm in the future. With this ending being canon, we would have gotten rid of half of Afton, but the other half, the physical half, is going to come back in one way or another. Hopefully you enjoyed this theory video. As I said, it was very different to my normal videos, but if you enjoyed, then make sure you tell me below and you also subscribe. Thank you to Psychic for doing some of the voice lines for the video. I hope to see you all again soon, but I've been Ozone and I have to go Zone. See you later.